Welcome to Navago Technologies presentation on how to effectively design your next power switching application with Avago's gate drive optocouplers. Here is our overall agenda and goal for today. We will begin with a gate driver overview where we will discuss gate drivers according to their topology and capability. There are hundreds if not thousands of applications that depend on isolated gate drivers, but we will discuss just a few focus applications. You will learn how to select the best gate driver to switch IGBTs and power MOSFETs based on their gate capacitance and the driver's peak current driving capability. Very often there is more than one suitable gate driver with different performance and features. We will cover the important and often critical design factors that you, the designer, must consider during the search for a suitable gate driver. Finally, fault detection and power switching device protection make your design robust and reliable. We will cover what types of faults are possible and how gate drivers can detect them and protect the expensive power switching devices in your system. Power MOSFETs and IGBTs play very important roles in motor inverters, uninterruptible power supplies, switch mode power supplies, and battery chargers. Power MOSFETs have been used much longer than IGBTs. Compared to IGBTs, power MOSFETs generally have a faster turn-on time but because of their higher internal resistance, they also have higher conduction losses. IGBTs, on the other hand, handle higher currents than power MOSFETs, but have slower turnoff and turn-on times. Both have the common characteristic of being easily driven by a turn-on voltage pulse, since both have capacitive gate terminals. Charging the gate capacitance turns on these power devices. Conversely, to turn these power devices off, we need to discharge the gate capacitance. How the designer handles the charging and discharging of the gate capacitor determines how fast these power devices turn on or off. The most commonly used charge and discharge circuit is the totem pole transistor pair shown here. Q1 turns on to charge the gate capacitance and to turn the power MOSFET on. Q2 turns on to discharge the gate capacitance and turn the MOSFET off. Each power switch will need a pair of these totem pole transistor driver pairs. A half bridge inverter circuit needs four drivers, two driver pairs. Note that these discrete devices may not match properly. The overall circuit behavior might be different from one system to the other. Internally, the top power switch of the half bridge inverter can also behave differently from the bottom power switch due to the differences in discrete devices used. This makes precise control of inverters a big challenge. Because of advancements in integrated circuits, engineers have been able to integrate similar transistor pairs for totem pole circuits into a single package to improve performance. Later, companies such as International Rectifier and STM integrated the top and bottom totem pole drivers into a single package called a high voltage IC or HVIC to drive the half bridge and even full bridge configurations. Today, inverters operate faster and switch higher voltages and power, and have become much noisier. The need to isolate the control side from the power handling side has also been needed and usually mandatory due to safety requirements. Originally, optocouplers were used for isolation, but now our specialized isolation gate driver optocouplers have been widely adopted to meet noise and safety isolation requirements in a single compact package. Avago's integrated isolated gate driver optocouplers have been widely adopted to meet the noise and safety isolation requirements in motor control, renewable energy, and automotive applications. The list of available isolated gate drivers from Avago Technologies is very long, covering from very basic isolated gate drivers, which include an optocoupler and a totem pole driver, to more intelligent drivers such as the HCPL-316J and ACPL-33XJ that include short circuit and overcurrent protection through desaturation detection, fault sensing, and an isolated feedback signal, and a Miller clamp that eliminates the need for a negative power supply. For direct drive to half-bridge inverter power switches, we also have dual-channel gate drivers, such as the HCPL-314J and HCPL-315J. Most of our gate drivers also come with undervoltage lockout protection. Our ACPL-312U, an automotive-grade gate driver, operates up to 125 degrees C. 
Finally, two important key points are that all our optically isolated gate drivers have very high common mode rejection ratio and are approved under all worldwide safety standards. There are hundreds of applications that we could discuss, but today we will focus on the three major ones, inverter motor drives, uninterruptible power supplies, and renewable energy conversion. In this diagram, we show the architecture of a widely used three-phase industrial motor application based on optically isolated inverter drivers. We can see the three-phase mains input is rectified to get a DC bus voltage to power the three-phase inverter IGBTs. Voltage detection is via an Avago HCPL-3760. Each IGBT is driven by an isolated gate driver channel using an ACPL-332J or ACPL-P343 or ACPL-W343. A total of six isolated gate drive channels are needed for the three-phase inverter, plus another isolated gate driver to drive the IGBT in the braking system. Each phase current can be sensed by our isolated current sensor amplifier, the ACPL-C79A, but only two are needed, as the third phase current can be derived. An isolated voltage sensor, the Avago ACPL-C87A, senses the DC bus voltage. An Avago motion control encoder may be used in the motor also. The sensor's outputs are fed to the microcontroller unit or DSP to determine how to drive the isolated gate drivers. Another important application is the online double conversion UPS. Isolated gate drivers are used in the rectifier and charger, as well as the three-phase inverter. The AC mains input is rectified to obtain a DC bus voltage that supplies power to the three-phase inverter. A single-phase inverter charger charges the battery bank. The single-phase inverter charger is full bridge. The four channels of isolated gate drivers are designed with the ACPL P340 or Avago ACPL-W340. Instead of a conventional two-level three-phase inverter at the output, more and more three-level three-phase inverters are being designed with the center point of the DC bus as the output neutral. With multi-level three-phase inverters, 12 isolated gate drivers are needed, 6 ACPL-330J drivers, and 6 ACPL-P314 or ACPL-W314 devices are used in this example. In addition, isolated phase current and bus voltage sensors are also needed. Due to the uniform behavior of isolated gate drivers and sensor optocouplers, more sophisticated control operations are also possible. Renewable energy has grown substantially over the last decade. Avago optically isolated gate drivers are used extensively in renewable energy systems, and Avago has focused on this important market segment. Renewable energy sources based on solar energy, wind power energy, geothermal energy, and wave energy all need very reliable components that must operate in harsh environments. These low voltage energy sources are converted to a high voltage DC bus level through boost converters that then power three phase inverters. For a large solar farm, hundreds if not thousands of solar panels are installed. Each will need a boost converter driven by isolated gate drivers such as the ACPL-P340 or ACPL-W340 to generate a high voltage for economical energy transport to a power conversion plant that may be located kilometers away. In the conversion plant's three-phase inverters, Avago's ACPL-332J isolators are used also. Once again, the system needs isolated current sensors to monitor load currents. Digital optocouplers are also needed for two-way communication of digital data safely. Other than large solar farms, individual household installations of solar panels have increased because solar panel prices have fallen substantially. This slide shows a scaled down version of the renewable conversion system on the last slide. All the electronics is combined in a small PCB assembly housed in a small box. Multiple Avago optocouplers, including the HCPL-316J gate drivers, are used extensively. The HCPL-316J includes IGBT desaturation protection. 
The fault signal changes from a high V-out gate drive voltage output impedance state to a logic low output within 5 microseconds of the voltage on the DSAT pin exceeding an internal reference voltage of 7 volts. The fault output remains low until reset is brought low. The fault output is open collector, which allows the fault outputs from all HCPL-316Js in a circuit to be connected together in a wired OR forming a single fault bus for interfacing directly to the microcontroller. This slide compares a dual-level inverter to a three-level, three-phase inverter. The total number of gate drivers plus current and voltage sensors needed are shown here. The advantages and disadvantages of a multi-level three-phase inverter are also shown. Although more complex to design, the three-level, three-phase inverter has a higher rail voltage, higher conversion efficiency, and a more sinusoidal output that results in lower distortion. Now that we have discussed some of the larger applications, let's get into the details of optically isolated gate driver selection and performance. We will discuss how you can easily calculate peak drive current and discuss critical design specifications such as the output high and low current and the selection of gate resistance. By following a few steps, you can select the best gate driver for your specific design. First calculate the minimum gate drive current needed to turn your IGBT fully off. Next start with the smallest peak current rating of the available devices and pick those that can cover the minimum gate driver current calculated. Now ask yourself whether the gate driver has the protection features you need, such as a Miller clamp, overcurrent or short circuit protection, a fault feedback signal, device reset, and others. Eliminate the drivers that do not have the needed features. Next, look at the operating temperature range. For example, do you need automotive grade or a higher operating temperature device? Finally, consider what is the maximum DC bus voltage in your design. If the DC bus voltage can go beyond 1200 volts, the gate driver should be available in a wider package, such as the wide body packaged ACNW devices from Ovago. The formulas here show you how to calculate the gate current through the gate emitter capacitor and the gate collector capacitor. The total drive current needed is the sum of both currents. The formula is discussed in greater detail in Avago application note AN1335. Let's use the formula to make a calculation. Let's calculate the peak gate current through the gate emitter capacitor and the gate collector capacitor. The total current needed is the sum of both currents. TSW here is the shortest turn-on time required. For example, if a minimum duty cycle is given, then TSW is equal to the duty cycle minimum times T, where T is the period of the switching period. The example here is for a 1200 volt, 200 amp IGBT that has a gate to emitter capacitance of 50 nanofarads and a Miller capacitance, that is the gate to collector capacitance, of 500 picofarads. The calculated IG2 is 2.5 amps, and IG1 is 0.67 amps. The gate driver must be able to deliver a total peak current of 3.17 amps, assuming a TSW of 300 nanoseconds. A suitable driver would be the ACNW-3190, ACPL-P343, or ACPL-W341. Continuing our discussion from the previous slide, here we show an example of IGPT gate charging current and voltage waveforms captured using an Avago HCPL-3120 to illustrate its peak drive current specification of 2.5 amps peak. This is shown by the green colored plot. The HCPL-3120 will not supply the necessary 3.17 amps of peak drive current shown by our calculation previously. However, with an Avago ACPL-W343, we can meet our drive requirement. As shown here, the ACPL-W343 specifies a minimum current of 3 amps, which is very close to 3.17 amps. The ACPL-W343 is able to meet our 3.17 amp requirement since its maximum current handling capability is 4 amps. From this example, we have learned that high peak output drive current is the key to switching IGBTs quickly. Once the best driver optocoupler is selected, you will calculate the largest gate resistor needed to limit the output current to the maximum allowable absolute current range of the gate drive optocoupler. 
The formula here shows that the output low voltage, VOL, is close to 2 volts for devices with Darlington configurations. For rail-to-rail -rail gate drivers, such as the ACPL-W343, the VOL is only about 0.1 volts or 0.2 volts maximum. The gate resistor selection is very important. If it is too big, the speed will suffer. But if it is too small, the peak current handling capability of the device will be exceeded. Don't forget to check the actual power dissipation of your device with your specific supply current, supply voltage, gate drive, gate charge, and switching frequency FS working conditions. Just remember that the actual power dissipation must not be higher than the maximum power handling capability of the selected gate driver package. Let's now look at the specifications you as a designer must be aware of and the implications of them for your design. We'll talk about output voltage level, propagation delay difference between two different parts, and propagation delay time, and finally, supply current. Darlington transistor output stages give more driving current, but the drawback is that the gate driver's output voltage during turn on is not very close to the VCC level. As shown here, the voltage drop due to a Darlington output stage is typically 3 volts, and it can go up to even 4 volts. So if VCC is supplied at 15 volts, the actual gate driver output voltage could be only 12 volts, not enough to drive the IGBT into saturation. An IGBT usually saturates fully at a gate voltage of 15 volts. This 3 volt or 4 volt drop must be compensated by raising the VCC to 18 volts or 19 volts. The output low voltage or VOL specifies the voltage drop across the gate driver's output MOSFET during the gate driver turnoff period. With the HCPL-3120 as an example, this output voltage is very low. In order to prevent additional voltage drops, make sure the IGBTs are placed close to the DC bus voltage, such as HVDC and minus HVDC. Don't be alarmed by the 3 volt base to emitter voltage shown here. This is correct as it is a Darlington transistor, not a basic transistor. With a base to emitter voltage of 3 volts, the VCE drop will be even greater than 3 volts. Avago also has parts with rail-to-rail -rail output, such as the ACPL-K342 and H342, and ACPL-P34X and ACPL-W34X that reduce the V output high drop. Let's now look at supply current. Avago gate driver optocouplers operate with very low ICC supply current, with a maximum current of only 3 milliamps. This is an obvious advantage to the designer, as low ICC current means lower power loss in the gate driver device. Another advantage of having low ICC current is that a bootstrap power supply can be used for the high side gate driver channel. The bootstrap supply operates as follows. When IGBT S1 turns on, IGBT S2 is off. VEE2 and VEE1 are shorted to the same voltage level, the constant DC supply VCC1, which is greater than 15 volts, will charge up capacitor CBS with current flowing through the DBS diode until it is slightly less than VCC1. When IGBT S1 turns off, diode DBS is reverse biased, and the charge across CBS is maintained and ready to activate the high side gate driver to turn IGBT S2 on. When ICC1 is low, capacitor CBS can be very small as lower energy is needed to power up the high side gate driver channel, and a smaller VCC1 power supply capacity is needed, making the overall power supply cost overhead very small. Propagation delay and propagation delay difference between two parts are very important specifications as they set how fast the switching speed can be for a gate driver. For any half bridge circuit, the top switch must be fully turned off before the bottom switch can be turned on, and vice versa. As shown here, Q1 is fully turned off before Q2 is turned on. The propagation delay of channel 1, TPHL, must be the longest or TPHL max. Similarly, the propagation delay of channel 2, also called TPLH, must be the shortest or TPLH min. This prevents cross conduction or punch through current. The diagram on the right shows the minimum TPHL and maximum TPLH. 
It is possible that both IGBTs are off at the same time. When this happens, no work is done, as no electrical energy is transferred to the load. This is called the maximum dead time. Maximum dead time determines the maximum and minimum duty cycle of any inverter circuit. The objective is to minimize the smallest dead time, so that no time is wasted idling and faster switching speeds can be achieved. Smaller dead time can also improve the accuracy of the inverter control. Imagine that if it would be possible to achieve a zero dead time, the inverter could turn on or off at any time we wanted. This would be the most accurate inverter one can possibly have. But of course, such a zero dead time system cannot exist. Smaller dead time also improves the efficiency of an inverter since idle time is reduced. This reduces wasted power. Let's now focus on the types of faults your design may encounter. When faults occur, the goal is to prevent damage to the switching devices and support circuitry. Any repairs usually require taking the system offline, which would lower investment return and degrade service to customers. There are five different types of IGBT problems that can be handled or solved by using Avago's isolated gate drive optocouplers. High voltage is hazardous and potentially deadly. It is always safer if human operators control the operation of the power switches through a low voltage isolated circuit. This can be done with gate drive optocouplers that meet stringent worldwide safety standards. Optocoupler technology with its high voltage common mode rejection and transient immunity is the most cost effective and best possible means to isolate the parasitic noise generated by fast switching IGBTs. Overcurrent and short circuit conditions in the inverter can cause the IGBT to operate in the linear active region. The resulting high power dissipation can cause the switching device to fail catastrophically. Many of Avago's advanced isolated gate drivers include desaturation detection that can shut down the power stage in an orderly manner before disaster happens. Some of our latest isolated gate drivers include a Miller clamp that prevents false turn on due to the large currents flowing through the IGBT's Miller capacitance. Finally, our isolation amplifiers can sense the short circuit current and react within a few microseconds. Avago's advanced isolated drivers with desaturation protection can sense short circuits and turn an IGBT off in less than 2.5 microseconds. This graph shows how semiconductor chip technology has improved over time by getting smaller and smaller with respect to saturation voltage. Today, protection circuits must be activated to shut down the power device in under 10 microseconds to prevent switch damage. As you can see in this picture, the consequences of not protecting high power IGBTs can be quite significant. Here we show our basic rail-to-rail -rail isolated gate drivers that have driving current from 1 amp to 4 amps maximum. They are in the very small SS06 package. Rail-to-rail -rail output voltage means the output voltage level is very close to the VCC supply voltage when fully turned on and very close to the VEE voltage after the IGBT is turned off. The delay time, TP, and propagation delayed time difference between devices, PDD, are 200 nanoseconds and 100 nanoseconds, respectively. These short times minimize dead time and improve efficiency. Other benefits of the drivers are a high CMR of 35 kV per microsecond minimum and a common mode voltage of 1.5 kV, under voltage lockout with hysteresis, low LED input current drive requirement with hysteresis, and an operating temperature range of minus 40 degrees C to 105 degrees C. All devices meet worldwide safety standards. The 2.5 amp drive ACPL-H342 and ACPL-K342 IGBT gate drive optocouplers include an active Miller clamp and undervoltage lockout protection. They feature rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing and are offered in a compact stretched SO8 package. Rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing is achieved by a delayed turn-on of an additional P-channel MOSFET in the device, removing the 2-volt drop after the first N-channel MOSFET is fully turned on. The ACPL H342 uses a power NMOS voltage follower stage to deliver the initial large current and a smaller PMOS to pull it to VCC to achieve rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing. 
This ensures that the IGBT's gate voltage is driven to the optimum level, with no power loss across the IGBT, even when an unstable power supply is used. Cross-conduction is prevented by measuring during production that TPHL is less than TPLH. The voltage and high peak output current supplied by these optocouplers make them ideally suited for direct driving IGBTs with ratings up to 1200 volts and 150 amps. For IGBTs with higher ratings, the ACPL-H342 or ACPL-K342 can be used to drive a discrete power stage which then drives an IGBT gate. The ACPL-H342 and ACPL-K342 have the highest insulation voltage of VIORM equal to 891 volts peak and 1140 volts peak respectively in the IEC EN 60747-5-5 standard. The devices can also be powered from a bootstrap power supply. As mentioned before, rail-to-rail -rail output voltage means the output voltage is very close to VCC when fully turned on and to VEE after turnoff. Our ACPL-P34X and ACPL-W34X devices all have rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing. Because the output voltage drive approaches VCC when the driver output is fully on, a VCC supply of as low as 15 volts is sufficient. There is no need to compensate for the Darlington output stage's voltage drop present in other devices. Because the VCC supply voltage can be as low as 15 volts instead of 18 volts to 19 volts, the switching energy is lowered by about 30%. Under voltage lockout protection is a very important feature included in most of Avago's gate drivers. As you have learned, overcurrent and short circuits can cause an IGBT to operate in its linear active region. A low gate drive voltage can also cause the IGBT to operate in its active linear region. As shown here, when the gate voltage is below 13 volts, the collector current handling capability is very low. The region to the right of this blue line is the linear region, where the region to the left is the saturation region. Take for example the 12 volt gate voltage curve where the VCE saturation voltage rises rapidly, but its collector current rises very slowly. For its collector current to handle a 500 amp load, the VCE saturation voltage could be much higher than 40 volts. The conduction power loss in the IGBT under this operating condition would be higher than 20 kW. Obviously, no power package or heatsink is big enough to handle such a high power loss. But if the gate voltage is raised to 15 volts, which is as shown in the straight curve, the VCE saturation voltage is only about 2 volts. The conduction power loss in the IGBT with this 15 volt gate drive voltage will be 1 kW, 20 times lower than previously, and can be dissipated or handled much more easily. The conclusion is that for most power IGBT switching applications, you must never let the gate drive voltage drop below 13 volts during turn on. Avago's under voltage lockout function does just that. The under voltage lockout circuit monitors the VCC constantly to ensure that the gate driver output is allowed to turn on only after VCC is higher than 13 volts. Once turned on, the under voltage lockout circuit continues to monitor VCC and quickly turns off the gate driver output if it senses that VCC is slightly lower than 13 volts. The voltage around 13 volts is called the under voltage lockout threshold. The actual under voltage lockout threshold can vary from 11 volts to 13 volts. Another point to note is that the actual undervoltage lockout has a hysteresis, UVLO plus and UVLO minus. When VCC rises from 0 volts to VCC, the gate driver output is only allowed to turn on if VCC is higher than UVLO plus. When the VCC supply drops, the gate driver output is allowed to turn off after VCC drops below UVL0 minus. This prevents the output from oscillation caused by noise. We have learned from the previous section that the objective is to obtain the smallest dead time possible so that higher switching speed and higher efficiency can be achieved. The longest dead time of an ACPL-P34X or ACPL-W34X gate drive optocoupler is only 200 nanoseconds, 
which is less than a third that of earlier generations of gate drivers, like the HCPL-3120. You can gain some advantages by using the Avago ACPL-H342 gate drive optocoupler over the older generation HCPL-3120. The three main advantages are rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing and low ICC supply current. You can therefore use a bootstrap power supply for the high side channel. Lower propagation delay and low propagation delay difference between parts, PDD, reduce dead time and make IGBT-based converters more efficient and reliable. And finally, the SS08 package reduces PCB area needs by up to 40%. The ACPL-33XJ series of 1.5 and 2.5 amp integrated gate drive optocouplers are our most advanced gate drivers and the most advanced in the market. Besides the normal built-in features such as high common mode rejection, under voltage lockout protection, wide VCC range, worldwide safety approval, low supply current, and short propagation delay, the series has built-in switch protection, desaturation protection, an active Miller clamp, fault feedback, plus reset, and soft shutdown. The devices have a wide operating temperature range of minus 40 to 105 degrees C. These highly integrated gate drivers will reduce your system component count and will use less PCB area. As discussed before, an IGBT should not be allowed to operate in its active linear region. Faults that can cause the IGBT to operate within the active linear region are overloads and short circuits. During an overload or short short circuit, an IGBT will go into desaturation mode, and its VCE saturation voltage will rapidly rise, as the red curve shows. For example, when short circuit current reaches 1800 amps, the VCE saturation voltage is over 8 volts. Without protection, this will cause high power losses in the IGBT and damage it. To protect against such overload and short circuit faults, a detection circuit detects against a preset saturation threshold if the VCE saturation voltage is too high. If the VCE voltage crosses this threshold, the protection circuit will be activated by sending a fault feedback signal across an optical channel to inform the microcontroller unit, or DSP, and at the same time cause the gate driver output to enter a soft shutdown mode that turns the IGBT off in an orderly manner. The whole protection circuit is called DSAT protection. As the name implies, it monitors and reacts to desaturation of the IGBT. The diagram here shows how a typical HCPL-316J is connected to an IGBT to activate the DSAT protection circuit. The collector pin of each IGBT must be connected to the DSAT pin of the gate driver through a desaturation diode, a desaturation resistor, and a desaturation capacitor. Other connections are not shown. In this circuit, we only show the top side or bottom side of the half bridge IGBT switch pair. Load connections are also not shown. The preset saturation threshold is 7 volts, and this is compared against the actual VCE saturation voltage through a comparator. The operation of the DSAT protection circuit has two parts. VCE voltage sense and compare and protection activation if the threshold level is crossed. The sensing part is only activated during the turn on period. During the IGBT's turn off period this tiny transistor is turned on to discharge the desaturation capacitor to zero volts. Immediately after IGBT turn on the tiny transistor is turned off to allow the 250 microamp constant current to flow either to the capacitor and or directly to the IGBT depending on which has the lower voltage path. Therefore, if the IGBT is turned on and saturates normally to around 2 volts, the constant current will flow to the desaturation capacitor first until it reaches 2.7 volts. And from then onwards, the constant current will flow through the desaturation diode and through the IGBT. As the desaturation capacitor voltage is only 2.7 volts, which is lower than the desaturation threshold setting of 7 volts, the protection circuit will not be activated. But when an overload or short circuit occurs, the VCE saturation voltage will go up to say 8 volts. The constant current will continue charging the desaturation capacitor. As the desaturation capacitor voltage reaches the 7 volt desaturation threshold, 
the comparator output is activated and the protection circuit is also activated. The result is that a fault signal is sent through an optical channel to pull this fault pin low, informing the MCU or DSP about the fault. And at the same time, it pulls this transistor on to discharge the gate of the IGBT through the gate resistor. Since this transistor is about 50 times smaller than the actual turnoff transistor here, the IGBT gate voltage will turn off gradually, activating the so-called soft shutdown. Here we show why a soft shutdown is desirable. Without a soft shutdown, the abrupt turnoff of an IGBT or power MOSFET will generate a high DVDT voltage spike when an inductive load is present. This voltage overshoot may damage the power switches. Avago's integrated solution lowers system component count and reduces cost. Another good protection feature included in our high performance gate drive optic couplers is the Miller clamp. As you know, all IGBTs have a parasitic capacitance called Miller capacitance, as shown in this diagram. Both S1 and S2 have Miller capacitance. This Miller capacitance always appears in between the collector base terminals. This parasitic capacitance may cause your system to fail. Let's say the S1 and S2 inverter arms are in the transition state, whereby S2 is turned off while S1 is turning on. The S2 collector will experience a sharp rise in voltage. The surge in voltage is able to produce a leakage current through the parasitic Miller capacitance that flows through the RG gate resistor and into the gate driver IC as shown. As S2 is supposed to be in the off state, the gate driver output is short circuited to ground and conducts the leakage current to ground. A voltage spike will appear across the gate resistor and raise the gate voltage. This voltage spike, if it is high enough, could inadvertently turn on S2 and cause shoot through or punch through current that can damage both IGBTs. Let's now discuss how an IGBT's Miller capacitance, CCG, can inadvertently cause an IGBT to turn on. Without the Miller capacitor, S2 turns off smoothly. With the Miller capacitance, Miller current flows and raises VG, which could be high enough to turn on the IGBT. An active Miller clamp is included in our ACPL-H342 and ACPL-K342 drivers to prevent this. A Miller clamp allows the control of the Miller current during a high DVDT situation, and it can also eliminate the use of a negative power supply voltage by quickly discharging the large gate capacitance of the IGBT to a low level without affecting the IGBT turnoff characteristics. During turnoff, the gate voltage is monitored and the clamp voltage is activated when gate voltage goes below 2.3 volts relative to VEE. The clamp voltage is typically V output low plus 2.5 volts for a Miller current up to 2.5 amps. The clamp is disabled when the LED input is triggered again. Application note AN5314 describes how the clamp reduces the parasitic turn on effect due to the Miller capacitor and at the same time eliminates the need of a negative power supply. The Miller pin should be connected to VEE when not in use to clamp the gate low when it detects a gate voltage of under 2 volts. With an active Miller clamp, parasitic Miller voltage spikes can be reduced. Without it, the parasitic Miller voltage spike can be quite high, as shown here. This is a good reference slide as it lists the common faults, the causes of these common faults, and potential damage if the faults occur and are not prevented. It is a good summary and end to this presentation. Avago optically isolated gate drivers can protect your systems from the faults that nearly every system eventually encounters. For gate drive under voltage protection, the ACPL-P34X, ACPL-W34X, and ACPL-33XJ gate drive optic couplers include under voltage lockout protection. For IGBT desaturation fault protection, an HCPL-316J have integrated desaturation fault detection and protection and will orderly and safely shut down an IGBT. To prevent overvoltage spikes across the IGBT during fault shutdown, both the ACPL-33XJ and HCPL-316J gate drivers include soft shutdown during the fault condition to provide an orderly and safe shutdown of the IGBT. 
To prevent parasitic Miller turnout, the ACPL-H342, ACPL-K342, and ACPL-33XJ include a Miller clamp to prevent false turnout. To prevent overcurrent and overload, use the ACPL-C79A isolation amplifier to sense the actual load current accurately and allow the system MCU or DSP to react before faults occur. Finally, note that bus overvoltage can happen during some applications, such as regenerative charging in hybrid and electric vehicles during braking and going downhill. Use the new ACPL-C87A to sense the bus voltage accurately and allow the system MCU or DSP to react before faults can occur. In order to help you design quickly and accurately, Avago has made many design tools available for you. These include white papers, market-specific product selection guides, multilingual video webinars, and evaluation boards. Thanks for learning about Avago Technologies gate drivers and capability. To obtain a gate driver evaluation kit, click here. For additional information, visit our web and sign up for new product information via our newsletter and social media sites. Please also take advantage of our worldwide technical application and support centers.